Good morning everyone, Borida. The theme today is love where you live. Now a while ago Miss Foster posted a bingo challenge for you and you had lots of things to find on your daily walk. I looked at all the pictures that were posted on our Facebook thread and thought about all the lovely countryside that you discovered while you were finding these things. So today I thought I'd share with you my walk. Um, I don't live in Bridgend, I live in the neighbouring county called Rondhacan and Taff or RCT some of you may know as um, and I've come up on my walk today to the top of quite a big hill or a small mountain and, and I'd like to share with you the view I can see from up here because we have such a fabulous countryside in Wales. After that I'm going to read you a story called Wonderful Earth and hopefully it will inspire you to love where you live even more by helping to keep our planet safe, clean and tidy. So for now I'm going to turn my camera around and share with you the magnificent view I can see from up here. It's quite early in the morning so when I came up yesterday there were too many people to stop and film but there's no one here at all today. You can see the sun hasn't come through the clouds yet. You can hear lots of traffic noise, a few birds but the view Oh, I can see the sun coming through the clouds there. The view is quite spectacular from up here. Feels like you're on top of the world looking down on all those houses. And it goes all the way around from the east to the west. I'm going to pan back round again. Down towards the west would be Swansea and then over towards the east would first be Cardiff and then Newport. You may be able to see um, a long road there that takes you up to the motorway. This book is called Wonderful Earth and it's written and illustrated by Nick Butterworth and Mick Inkpen. Wonderful Earth First of all, there was darkness, nothing, zero. Then God said, let there be light. And there was. Then suddenly, there were stars and planets and galaxies and comets and meteors and great clouds of gas, all whizzing about. Bang! It was like an enormous firework display. And God said, that's not bad for a start. Out of all the millions and billions and zillions of planets, God picked out one to be special. Why this one? I don't know. It wasn't even big. It was the Earth. God made the Earth spin which made the day and night. And he made the moon go round the earth, which made the months. And he made the earth go round the sun, which made the years. Then, with his finger, he gently nudged the North Pole a little to one side, which made the summer turn to winter and back again. It was all very complicated, like making a giant clock. But it all worked perfectly. On the earth, God made dry land and water. The land had mountains and canyons and deserts and huge exploding volcanoes. The water was even better. God made rain and rivers and mist and waterfalls and hailstones and snow and icicles and icebergs and great oceans with enormous crashing waves. Just out of water. Then came the plants, little twiddly ones at first, too small to see. The plants grew and grew and grew until great forests spread right round the earth and the whole world turned green. It was very beautiful. 
There were all kinds of plants. Some had leaves like giant head, sorry, giant hands. Some had long spiky ones. Some had small feathery ones. And some had no leaves at all. Some could grow in just one day and some lived for a thousand years. Some had lovely flowers and some had delicious fruit. Some had seeds as big as your head and some had seeds like dust. And some had seeds that whirled like helicopters and grew into big trees. But now the fun really started. <gasps> God made animals. <gasps> what a fabulous pop-up lion. He made some black and white and some brightly coloured. Some with lots of hair and some with lots of teeth. Some high jumpers, some who live in big groups and some who live by themselves. And even some low jumpers. Some with stripes, some with very big, sorry, some very big and some tiny. Some with long necks and some with spots. Some who were good at fishing. Some with horns made of hair. Some that hiss and some that roar. Some fat and grey, some pink and tall. Some with rings on their tails, some with tentacles and some with tusks. And some with stings on their tails, some fast and some slow. Some with feathers that are blue and some with bottoms that are blue. Some who like it cold and some who like it hot. Some birds that can't fly and some fish who can. And if you turn each half of the page, you can make some that God didn't think of, like the ostrach and the crocopus. There's the ostrach there and the crocopus. God made hummingbirds as small as bees and whales as big as buses, chameleons that can change to any colour, sloths that grow moss on their backs, parrots that can talk and swifts that sleep while they're flying. Moths that look like leaves and insects that look like sticks. Skunks that smell disgusting, except to other skunks. Squirrels that fly, bees that dance, worms that eat mud and goats that eat anything. Dolphins that smile, crocodiles that grin and hyenas that laugh. Butterfly fish and parrot fish and lion fish and bat fish and cat fish and dog fish and hog fish. Hairy caterpillars and bald eagles. Beavers that build dams and moles that dig tunnels. Kangaroos that carry their babies in pouches. And pelicans with beaks like shopping bags. Sharks with teeth like razors. Beetles with antlers. Gorillas as strong as ten men. Jumping fleas and jumping spiders. Toads that blow themselves up like balloons. Electric eels and beetles that glow in the dark. Bears that sleep all winter long. Termites that make tall houses, tough as concrete. Salmon that can swim up waterfalls. Lizards like dragons. Elephants with noses like hoses. And squids that squirt ink. He made animals that sing and squawk and spout and hiss and hoot and howl. And honk and chirp and peck and pounce and flap and fly and slide and slither and squirm, and creep, and crawl, and prowl, and growl, and gallop, and glide, and dive, and swoop, and jump, and hang, and warble, and squeak, and roar. And he made the duck-billed platypus too. And he made a whole lot of other animals that you've probably never heard of. The dugong, 
the common noddy, the slow loris, the football fish, the banana quit, the lousy watchman, the weedy sea dragon, the wrestling half beak, the pink fairy armadillo, the rubber boa, and the bush squeaker. And last but not least, he made something really wonderful. What do you think it was? Any ideas? Some of you might know this story and know what's coming. It was you. There's a lovely mirror on this page for you to see yourselves in. And me, of course, and everybody else. He made people. We're his masterpiece, his best effort. Hooray! In some ways, we're a bit like God. We can think and talk and make things. We're really very clever. We're so clever. We even walked on the moon. Now you'd think, with such a wonderful world to live in, we'd take good care of it, wouldn't you? Especially being so clever. But lately, we haven't been making a very good job of it. We've chopped down the forests. We've filled the air with dirty smoke. We've made the rain sour. We've poisoned the rivers and the seas. And destroyed the places where animals live. We've even made the weather go wrong. That's not very clever, is it? Our poor old world isn't very well at the moment. It's in a terrible mess. We're spoiling the beautiful place God gave us to live in. We must stop to think. Does he really want us to chop down the trees? Does he really want us to make all that smoke? How can we clean up the rivers and the rain? How can we look after the plants and animals? Well, it won't be easy. But if we ask him to help us change, maybe, just maybe, this can happen. Going from a sad planet here to a happy one. I hope you enjoyed that story. There's the little blurb on the back telling you all about it. I hope you love where you live. And if you don't, then what changes and improvements could you make to make it a better place for you to live? Please help look after our beautiful planet. Stay safe, everyone, and I hope to see you soon. Bye.